to a political issue. He demands recognition, respect, human rights, and Hiral is a large group of people. And there are violent clashes between him and police, his group and, and ordinary people, no matter what. It's black against white, yellows against green, doesn't matter where the division line goes. As long as this group come into antagonistic clash, sometimes militantly, sometimes with firearms, that is destabilization process. The sleepers, many of whom are simply KGB agents, become leaders of the process of destabilization. Doesn't mean that Comrade Andropov sends Comrade Ivanov to the United States. The person who takes care is already here. He is a respected citizen of the United States. Sometimes he, he gets money from various foundations for, for his legitimate uh, struggle for, I don't know, human rights, women rights, kid lib, prison lib, whatever. There are sympathetic Americans who donate their money to him. This stabilization process usually leads directly to the process of crisis. In case of developing nations, that's the area where I, I was active, the process starts when, when the legitimate bodies of power, the social structure collapse. It's, it cannot function anymore. So instead, we have artificial body injected into society, such as non-elected committees. You remember I was talking about them here. Social workers who are not elected by people, media who, self, who are self-appointed rulers of your opinion, uh, some strange groups uh, which claim that they know how to lead society forward. They don't usually. All they care is how to collect donations and, and, prom and sell their own concocted ideology, mixture of religion and ideology. Here, we have all this artificial body claiming power. If the power is denied to them, they take it by force. In case of Iran, for example, all of a sudden we have revolutionary committees. Who? What, what kind of revolution? There was no revolution yet, and yet they had the committees. They were taking power of, of judgment. They had, they had the power of execution, they had the power of, of uh, le legislation, and that they had the power of, of uh, judicial. Uh, all of them combined in one person, who is half-baked intellectual, sometimes graduated from Harvard University or, or Berkeley. He comes back to his country and, and he, he thinks that he, he knows the answer to all the social economical problems. Okay? Crisis is when society cannot function any more productively. It collapses, obviously. That's the, the word for crisis. So therefore, the population at large is looking for a savior. The religious groups are expecting a messiah to come. The workers say, we have family to feed. Let's have a strong government, maybe socialist government, centralized. When, when somebody put, put the employers on their place and, and let us work, we are sick and tired of going to strike and, and missing overtime and all that stuff. We need some strong man, strong government, a leader, a savior is needed. Population is sick and tired already. And here we are, we have a savior. Either a foreign nation comes in, or the local group of, of leftists, Marxists, no matter what they call themselves, Sandinista, a reverend or some sort, Bishop Muzureva, like in, in Zimbabwe, doesn't matter. A savior comes and says, I will lead you. So we have two alternatives here. Civil war. An invasion. Okay? See how it goes? Civil war, we know what it is. Lebanon is, is the best example. The civil war, which was artificially implanted in Lebanon by injection of force of PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization. Invasion we have in many other countries like Afghanistan, uh, and name any 
East European country. It, it was invaded by the Soviet army. But the result is the same. The next stage is normalization. Normalization is a very ironic word, of course. It is borrowed from 1968 situation in Czechoslovakia, when the Soviet propaganda and after them New York Times declared the country is normalized. The tanks moved into Prague, so there is no more Prague Spring, there is no more violence, normal, normalization. At that stage, the self-appointed rulers of the society don't need any revolution anymore. They don't need any radicalism anymore. So this is the reverse from destabilization. Basically, it is stabilizing the country by force. So all the sleepers and activists and social workers and liberals and homosexuals and professors and Marxists and Leninists are being eliminated physically sometimes. They've done their job already. Okay? They are not needed anymore. The new rulers need stability to exploit the nation, to exploit the country, to take advantages of the victory. Okay? So no more revolutionaries, please. And that's exactly what happens in a number of countries. You remember Bangladesh? This is the crisis in which I was instrumental. First they had Mujibur Rahman. In 1971 he was the leader of, of People's Party, Avani League, with moustache like Stalin. He was in, in, in Russia many times. In five years, he was shot by his former colleagues, Marxists. He fulfilled his function. In Afghanistan, it happened three times. First there was Taraki, then there was Amin, now there's Babra Karmal. They killed each other successively, one after another. The moment he fulfills his duty, the first one demoralized country, the second destabilized, the third one brought it to crisis. Goodbye, comrades. Babra Karmal comes from Moscow and put in, in, into the seat of power. Same thing happened in Grenada recently. Maurice Bishop, Marxist, was killed by Austin, what's his name, General something, who was also a Marxist. Right? So no more revolutions, please. Normalization now. From now on, no more strikes, no more homosexuals, no more women lib, no more kid lib, no more lib, period. <laughs> A good, solid, democratic, proletarian freedom. <laughs> no, <that's it. laughs> now, to reverse this process takes enormous effort. When today, United States had to invade Grenada to reverse the process of subversion. Some people say, boy, this is not good, it's not kosher to invade the beautiful country, island of Grenada. <laughs> well, why didn't you stop the process here, when Grenada was just approached by leftists? Why not to prevent Maurice Bishop to come in power in the first place? Did Grenadians want him? Very questionable. They didn't know who was Maurice Bishop in the first place. He came to power by coup d'etat himself. Okay? No, we let the situation develop further and further and further until the crisis and normalization very soon. And then the United States decided to invade country, discovering that the, the country was absolutely a military base for the Soviet Union. Of course it's a drastic measure. Of course it's, it's a pity that uh, Marine Corps had to, to lose, what, 17 lives. Very bad. Why not to stop the process before it comes to crisis? Oh, no, intellectuals will not let you. It's interference in, the, in the domestic affairs. They are very careful not to, not, not to let American administration to interfere in domestic affairs of Latin American countries. They don't mind Soviet Union interfering in these affairs. Okay. So to reverse this process from here, it takes only and always military force. No other force on earth can reverse this process at this point. At this point, it does not take military invasion of the United States Army. It takes strong action, like in Chile, a CIA covert involvement to prevent the savior from outside to come into power and to stabilize country before it erupts into civil war.